Matt, following on from last weekend and the fact that this game is on a Friday, it's been a condensed week training-wise, but how has training been? Interesting week. Um, always strange with a slightly different schedule. Um, obviously, going into Easter weekend and the, the Friday fixture and the, the early kickoff. Um, we had a few sore bodies at the start of the week. Um, one or two missed training with, with illness. Um, so a little bit disjointed at the start of the week, but then that was probably mainly due to those days being recovery days um, and not direct training days, certainly for the group who played the majority of minutes at Carlisle. Um, but good to get that journey behind us and that journey out of the system, so to speak. And then yesterday and today, we're looking forward to good good training days in preparation for, for another encounter um, at the park, but looking forward to playing in front of a, a full capacity, looking forward to playing in front of a full house um, on a good pitch against a good team. We had the, the club photographers down at training yesterday. It looked like it was, it was good fun for both them and the players. It was great to see Sam Nombe out there pictured. Um, he can't be too far away, surely? No, he's still a little bit away. Um, he, he's still separate from the group in terms of his his recovery and his rehab. Um, he'll do individual bits of work within the, the coach's domain um, and within the team environment. But he's, he's still a little bit away, so we, we certainly can't put any pressure on Sam in relation to, to this weekend or, or the forthcoming fixtures. We've got to be respectful of what that, that injury was. Um, but to see him in a kit is always a, a pleasing factor. And to see him out in the, the open air and out on the training pitch um, always is a good sign. Um, the biggest tell will be in the next few days and the next week or so. Um, that will give us a clear indication if he's going to play a part in the remainder of the season. Obviously, you know, Jonathan Grounds is ready to be picked against. So he'll add another layer defensively. How far away is Harry Kite from being back? Harry Kite still a few weeks away. Um, that, that was a really nasty injury um, at Bradford at the time. It seems so long ago now. Um, but for such a, an honest player to, to injure that groin in the manner he did, that was a real shame for Harry Kite. Um, really pleased to have Groundsy's experience back within the squad. Um, someone who's been there and done it and played at the highest level and probably won't be affected by the occasion or the, the environment. So we're looking forward to introducing Groundsy back to where he needs to be and, and using his experience at, at certain times. Kyle Taylor is obviously the, the other noticeable absentee alongside Sam Nom. So um, the group a little bit stronger than it was at Carlisle with, with, with Groundsy. Um, and all of a sudden we've, we've got a group of maybe 19 to 20 players who we're looking to select from, depending on energy and form. We'll move on to, to tomorrow's game then. Um, I guess we have to start with the fact that it's a sellout crowd. We've managed to open the away end to home fans. It's going to be a great spectacle. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, we're, we're looking forward to it. Um, it's down to the players. The players have put themselves in this position. Um, they're, they're the reason all these people are coming to watch us tomorrow. Um, they're, they're coming to watch a team with, with certain characteristics and certain attributes and a certain skill set. Um, and I really hope we show that tomorrow. Um, if that group of fans, and it's a large number of fans and our biggest number of fans we've had for a, a long period of time at the park, go away from the game um, come Friday afternoon, um, I want them to have a clear idea of our identity. Um, and what we are as a football club and what this group of players represent. Um, and if they do, then they'll have seen a performance which looks like us, which we've done time and time again this season. And hopefully we'll have a, a points return to show off the back of that as well. But we know it won't be easy. We're playing against a good team full of good individual players. Um, they were probably tipped towards the start of the season to be challenging at the, to the top of the table for whatever reason that hasn't quite happened. Um, but they've picked up good form of late. Um, but we're at home and we have to back ourselves. We've seen people online saying that this is their first match they're ever coming to or it's their first one this season. This is an opportunity for the football club, not just with the product on the pitch, but with the product off it as well to attract new fans and, and keep them. Yeah, well, it's, it's not only down to the players to, to to represent the club in the right manner, but the existing fans as well, the ones who've been there week in, week out. Um, we want the match day experience to be as positive as it possibly can be. We want people to enjoy it. Obviously, the, the product on the pitch is, is, is always huge and plays a massive part in that. But the way people conduct themselves in, in, in the stands, in the stadium, in, in the walkways, on the way to the ground, in the pubs before the game, um, I want them to be as respectful as they possibly can. And then when they get in, into the stadium, make as much noise, but positive noise towards it the team um, in relation to helping them achieve something which we wanted to achieve on Friday which is hopefully another win another few points under the belt um, and then we'll quickly move on to what's next We'll move on to the opponents then Colchester it seems a long long time since we visited there earlier this season but they seem to have dragged themselves away from what was looking like a relegation battle and have started to pick up a little bit 
yeah, they've been in a difficult position for the majority of the season. Um, obviously, changed the manager throughout that, that that time as well. Um, so probably not hit a consistency until the last sort of four to six weeks, um, where they've got a, a group of players and they're probably a spine playing on a more regular basis, and they've been able to build off the back of that. And you've just touched upon it there, picked up some really impressive results. So, you know, we we we, we got not, nothing to fear, but we've got to respect the opposition as we always do. Um, and we've got an idea of what their personnel and their team are capable of. Um, but as always, when we're at home, we want to play on the front foot. We want to dictate the running of the game. Um, we want to get that ball as close to the opposition goal as, as we always can um, to try and put them under pressure. Um, and no matter what happens, come come three or five o'clock on, on Friday, we, we need to know that they've been in the game um, and they've seen us at our best. And, and that's why I always ask the players to, to put their best out there um, and put their best in front of the opposition. And it comes down to a little bit of luck on the day, a little bit of skill, um, things going in your your right direction um, but hopefully come whatever time on Friday we're in a good position Obviously after the game there's then the game against Tranmere on Monday, Monday so it's a quick turnaround so what does Saturday and Sunday what will that look like for the squad and for yourself? Well, for the majority of the group it will be a recovery day on Saturday um, where they'll go through bits and pieces out on the pitch in relation to, to Tranmere um, but at a slow paced level we'll try and get some food in from, from elsewhere to, to feed the players give them as much chance as we possibly can to recover in the right way and then Sunday we'll, we'll travel up to, to, to the northwest of England uh, we'll train halfway on the way again we hope we won't encounter the same traffic as we did at, at, at on the way to Carlisle um, with it being Easter Sunday I don't know if there'll be more or less traffic on the road and, and then hopefully we'll have a good night's sleep on the Sunday night in preparation for another tough game on Monday but first things first we, we've got to get Saturday out of the way um, and, and the preparation for, for sorry Friday out of the way and the preparation for Friday is obviously a little bit different in terms of an earlier kickoff um, but then more recovery time post-match. Um, obviously, we got the, the signing and, and the interaction with the fans after the game. So the players will just grab a bit of food that directly or straight after the game and um, do what they need to do in terms of their recovery bits and pieces. And we'll go out and spend a bit of time with the fans. Um, but I've got to have half an eye on what's next as soon as that game's finished. We'll touch on it briefly. There. You, you mentioned the post-match signing session. It's, it's just another layer to add to the, the community club that we are and, and we love to interact with the supporters as much as possible. Yeah, we, we've always done it. We've just not been able to do it for the last two seasons. Um, so the players and fans hopefully will enjoy it. They'll, they'll all be respectful of what we're trying to achieve. Um, it will have to be well organised and well structured in, in terms of the players and what the players need. Um, we'll, we'll ask the players to be out there and to be in good spirits and hopefully they've got a good performance um, previously to put them into that, that mood and the fans as well. But regardless of the result on, on, on Friday, it's almost a chance to celebrate each other's role in this season so far. Um, so, like I say, come come three o'clock on Friday afternoon, we'll be able to spend a little bit of time together um, and to show each other how much we care about you know, the roles we've all played this season um, and no more so than the fans.